good morning. This we are gonna talk about celiac disease today. So first, I'm gonna talk about what normally happens to gluten in the body. So I'm gonna give us an intestines. Here's our villi, on these villi, microvilli, and so forth. So gluten floats through the body. We're going to have a pink gluten. Gluten floats through the body. And because of its structure, I mean, it's pretty resistant to digestion. I mean, it does form the glue of many different food products. It actually makes it down through the villi, down into a layer called the lamina propria. Lamina propria. Okay. And once it gets down to this layer, um, some of it will be simply digested by dendritic cells. Okay. So these are dendrites. which are members of the innate immune system. So some of these will be digested by these dendrites. Some of it will be converted or deaminated by transglutamase 2. Okay, so... The, these also can be deaminated, which gives them a negative charge. Then normally transglutamase 2 is not extremely active. It becomes more active um, during an immune or inflammatory response. So normally not that active. By the way, these, well, let's, let's, get, let's maintain consistency. So these deaminated gluten will also be consumed by dendrites, and the story ends. Now, with people with celiac disease, we're going to draw our intestines again. Okay. In people with celiac disease, we're going to have our gluten. This gluten's going to come down. Okay, these dendritic cells will consume them, okay, and then this dendritic cell will actually go to a, lo to a local lymph node. And a faulty MHC, right, so I keep saying faulty, I use that, that's my term. An MHC that recognizes a piece of this broken down gluten as a piece of this broken down gluten as an antigen, as a foreign body, a dangerous foreign body, right? So there's our gluten that's broken down, and then... This MHC right here, this red MHC, will grab a piece of this. Right, and present it. We'll present it to a helper T molecule. Excuse me, helper T cell. And this is a naive helper T cell. Remember, this is a part of the adaptive immune system. So this is the connection right here between the adaptive and the innate immune system in this response. And so once this helper T cell 
seize this now antigen. It does a number of things. Okay. Um, it's going to release a bunch of cytokines, which is going to cause an immune response. It's going to activate cytotoxic T cells. It's also going to activate B cells, which will then release antigens to the this gluten. So now antigens are going to be released into the lumen, released into the blood, and so it's going to be sticking onto this gluten all over the place, just exasperating this itch, this issue because now it's even more likely to be considered foreign. Now, what about our transglutamase 2, right? Our deaminator. Transglutamase 2. Well, now that an inflammatory response is happening, right? This transglutamase 2 becomes more active. And what it turns out is when transglutamase 2 de so because of this inflammatory response, transglutamase becomes more active, interacting with more gluten, and making it negatively charged, or the peptides of the gluten negatively charged. And what happens, that actually makes this MHC more likely to think that these are antigens. Makes it more stable, um more suspect to this MHC, okay? So what you can see here then is that we've got this starting the process, right, presenting to the helper T cell, this causing our immune response, and then that actually makes this more likely. And so it's this downward cycle, um, eventually causing celiac disease, where the inflammation in the cytotoxic T cells, and because of the interactions with the cytokines, these villi slowly get destroyed. Slowly get destroyed. Okay? Before I go, I just wanted to look at this, um, look at this diagram I put in the Hello itself, um, I have mentioned all of these things. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions on it um, if you have them. All right, thank you very much. Made with DoodleCast Pro.